Hey guys, welcome back to your channel. In this episode, I'm going to talk about what is reality. So, what is reality? The reality is what you are seeing through your eyes. Is that so? I started to question about this idea when I was studying in the UK, doing my master's degree in international relations. And in international relations, there are several theories. One of them is called realism. Realism is the theory that argues that strong countries always win over weak, weak countries. For instance, the United States is the strongest because it has the most armed forces and always the strong one will win. So the world is like an anarchy. And I had, back then I had to write an essay about this realism and I have read quite many books and journals. But when I was going to actually s start writing the essay, I started to question what does real mean? What does reality mean? When s what someone thinks is real may not be real for someone else. And then I started to question what is reality. And since then I have been studying and reading books and trying to find out a question, uh, an answer to my question. And today I think I have found out my answer, so I'd like to share my thoughts with everyone. So I found out that the reality you are seeing is your reality, meaning it might be different from other people's reality because I think the reality you are seeing is through your heart's projector. So you have a heart or you have a mind, whatever, inside you. And there you have something like a projector, you know, the device that you can project something onto a screen and your heart or your mind just work like a projector and you can only see whatever the data that's installed inside your mind or your heart and what you're seeing just like a screen just like a movie that's the reflected through your projector so if there's a data which is not installed in your projector of your heart, then you cannot see that reality. S that means what you think is reality is just a, a reflection or a projection that your mind or your heart have created. And it's merely a reflection of your yourself's condition, your mind's condition, your heart's condition. And you're actually selecting what you want to see. You're only seeing what you want to see it. In other words, you, you cannot see things that you didn't choose to see. This could lead to the idea of law of attraction. Law of attraction is that whatever things you wish to be realized will be realized if you keep thinking, keep imagining that thing. So I think this is also one of the law of attraction. You only see what you wish to see. 
And going back to this heart or mind as a your projector argument. In this projector, you have installed many data which have been accumulated throughout your life since you are born. All the data you are saving, you don't even realize that you have saved so many data inside your mind or your heart. These data, in other words, are called subconsciousness or subconscious mind. I think you have heard of it. The human being's consciousness can be divided into a conscious mind and subconscious mind. Just imagine a big iceberg or glacier floating on the ocean. What's outside of the ocean is just a tip of the glacier, which is conscious mind. But 95% of your consciousness is subconscious mind, which is under the ocean, which you can't see. You can't even recognize the existence, but you do have subconscious mind. And it, it's the subconscious mind that affect the projector, what you see, what you project onto the screen of your reality. And I have done a little bit of research about this subconscious mind. So this subconscious mind is made when you repeat your inputs in using your conscious mind. When you repeat something so many times, it reaches your subconscious mind and it will be embed, embedded in your subconscious mind. And I also read somewhere that 90% of your subconscious mind is made of negative thoughts. That's because your self-defense function, because you want to defend yourself when negative things happen so that you don't get shocked that much. And that's why your subconscious mind is mostly negative mind. They're always preparing for the worst case scenario. And from there, you can find that to control your subconscious mind, you can input a positive image through your conscious mind repeatedly. That's how I guess you can rewrite your negative subconscious mind and change the data that's saved inside your mind's project projector so that the reality you see can be changed from a negative one to a positive one. And there's also this collective subconsciousness underneath your personal individual subconscious mind, which I might talk in another episode. So f today I'm talking about how your subconscious mind is affecting the reality you see, that you think is a reality. I will give you some examples. For instance, you have a boyfriend and the boyfriend came to your house or you have a girlfriend, girlfriend came to your house and then they went to a toilet, bathroom and then the sound of 
they closing the door was so loud. And you hearing that loud sound. And what do you think? So the sound is just a fact happening out there, but how it's being seen by you is up to your projector, your subconscious mind that's inside you. For instance, some people will just think, oh, he just closed the door with big power. So it just happened to be a loud sound. That's it. But some other people might think, oh, maybe he's angry. He, she's angry. He or she's upset. That's why they close the door with loud sound. And then from there, you will start thinking some negative thoughts. For instance, what have I done? Did I do something wrong? And after he or she came back from toilet, bathroom, they, you will start asking them, have I done something or are you angry? Are you upset? And from there, you are creating another reality of those who didn't think anything from the big loud sound. This is just one example, but what I'm to saying here is that what you think is your reality is just your own reality created by your own. Other people, other people are seeing different realities. This is how people will start fighting because they think everyone is seeing the same reality, but that's not true. Everyone is seeing different realities. So maybe what you have seen are not seen by other people. If you start thinking this way, you will willing to understand other people's reality, other people's perspectives, what's in his subconscious mind, what makes him or her see the world as they are seeing. So today, this episode, my conclusion is that there is no ultimate reality, the same for everyone. Everyone is seeing different realities, which is projected onto their screen through their projector of their mind. So this is also a classic argument of people surrounding you are uh, the mirror that you're seeing. You are just mirroring yourself onto other people. I think this is essentially talking about the same thing. I didn't understand what the mirror argument means when I was in early 20s. I was trying hard to find out the answer to that argument. But now I have found out that what they mean by other people are your mirror is that you are seeing other people through your own screen, through your own glasses, through your own projectors. That's why if you have some problem, negative events, very bad things happening to you, before you f go into the things happen to you, you should also explore what's inside your heart, what's inside your mind. What does your subconscious mind tell you? What made you think that way? 
how did you make this subconscious mind throughout your life? And this subconscious mind is made of your personal history since when you were born and mostly your childhood memories are affecting so much of your current subconscious mind. I myself also found out that my childhood memory was affecting in a bad way. Uh, in my subconscious mind and I always thought my parents didn't like me and they don't love me and the world I used to see was through that idea that my parents didn't like me so I couldn't like myself and when you see the world through that projector through that subconscious mind you will see other people not liking you because you are thinking uh, your parents didn't like you you don't like yourself so other people probably don't like you either but this is just your own reality you have created other people might actually like liked you so to change this i have changed I think I have changed my subconscious mind and I have tried to remember uh, my old memories and repeat those memories inside my mind and try to see what I felt when I was small and just don't try, don't pretend to be forgotten. Just try to see what happened in your childhood. Don't run away from those memories that you think were very bad. And when I was about to turn my 30, I did this work and I'll try to remember many of my old memories which were pretty bad. I didn't want to remember them anymore but once again I tried to open the Pandora's box and try to see them, see what I, how I felt back then. And then one day I suddenly realized that my mom actually likes me. He, uh, she actually loves me. This idea was kind of mind blowing to me because I guess in my subconscious mind, I always thought my mom didn't like me. She doesn't like me. That's why she left me. But then I re, I was able to rewrite my subconscious mind. I was able to convince myself that she actually loves me so much and I actually love her as well. I was somehow able to admit this idea of I love my mom and I was actually able to tell her that oh I love you. I think I've never told her. I always thought I should love her, but I guess I never actually f felt from the bottom of my heart that I actually love her. And since I admitted this idea that she loves me and I love her, somehow I felt my mind, my heart got a bit lighter and the world I see now is a bit brighter than before. I was able to admit that I also love myself. My parents loved me. And also another story that made me realize that I love myself is that I found about 
more about God. And now I think God exists and God loves me so much. It's an unconditional love. Usually the love parents give you tend to be conditional love. They love you only when you do this, only when you do that. If you didn't do this, they wouldn't love you. But the love from God is unconditional love. Whatever you do, God loves you. Your own existence deserves to be loved. And when I found this idea, I felt so much loved, enlightened. I felt so much compassion from God, from universe, from this world. This God part, may, maybe some people don't believe. It's okay. You don't have to believe in God altogether. Here I'm just saying, whenever you think this world sucks, this world is full of negative events, go back to yourself. Look inside your self, your mind, what's there. Some, some data you have stored long, long time ago and you don't, you don't even remember it. But I advise you to dig up those old memories and pr play them once again and find out how you feel right now when you're grown up. You might be able to just delete those unnecessary data or memories or rewrite a new memory onto it so that you can change your own subconscious mind so that you can see a different world in front of you. So today uh, that's all for me and see you in my next episode. Bye bye.